If you're a Windows person thinking of trying Linux for the first time, buckle up sunshine, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. In the beginning, it was all unicorns and butterflies, but now it's been a month and no oh boy, it's definitely not what I thought it would be and the halo effect started to wear off. Before I start, I wanna be clear. This isn't a Windows is better than Linux video. If you're a Linux user and you think that everything else sucks, feel free to skip this video. As some of you know, I installed Windows 11 and of course experienced the usual stuff that you can expect with a brand new operating system. And whilst the bugs are continued to get fixed, I thought I would try Linux. So here is my Linux expectation versus Linux reality check. The expectation. When I was researching the idea of moving to Linux, everywhere I looked, there was a promise of an amazing community of Linux people who would be by my side as we cut with Windows cord and stick it to the man. The reality, what a load of There is no community of Linux users, but there are a bunch of Linux distro tribes and boy, do they hate each other. I dared ask which distro I should use based on my requirements. And instead of getting, hey, you should try this, or hey, you should look at that, I mostly got, don't ever install blank. So that's nah, not super helpful. The expectation, we welcome newbies who are coming across from Windows and Mac, and if you get stuck, there are so many places you can go and ask questions and get help. The reality, well, there are two camps here. Those who are generally helpful and are happy to help us newbies, and those mostly a bunch of elitist, we're better than you Unfortunately, the latter group is far louder than the former. Look, as you can see from this channel, I don't believe in just showing a solution to a problem. So when I was posting specific questions outlining the research that I've done, the steps that I've taken, and where I was stuck, I was certainly not expecting someone to hand a solution on the silver platter. However, I didn't expect for so many people to reply with, RTFM. I mean, could you be any less helpful? That's like telling someone who is lost and asking for direction that they should learn about compass points, orientation in time and space as you laugh and walk away. At least point us in the right direction as we fumble our way through this. And remember, these questions were posted in forums that were specifically titled Linux for newbies. So uh, thanks for nothing. The expectation? Things in Linux may be different to how they work on Windows, but they surely do work. The reality, uh, somewhat bullshit. Not everything just works. Not everything has an equivalent app, especially when you venture beyond the basics of Office Productivity Suite. When you do find apps, they simply don't have the same features and options that their Windows equivalent apps have. So you spend so much time manually tweaking settings. Reminds me of the olden days of Windows when we needed to change the autoexec.bat, configs.sys, ini files, and changes to the IRQ on the sound blaster just to make everything work. And I'm sorry, that really isn't owning the operating system or whatever crap they tell you when you dare ask questions in the mighty community. It's just a total waste of time. There are loads of incompatibility issues with hardware devices, printers, scanners, cameras, audio, video mixers, non-English keyboards, and don't get me started on processors and graphics cards. If you make the mistake of asking these questions, you get attacked for using it wrong or getting told off for buying the wrong hardware devices in the first place. Oh, please. On what planet does it make sense for anyone to throw out perfectly working hardware to replace it with another brand just to make it work on Linux? And it's not really Linux's fault. What it seems to boil down to is simple. Although this is somewhat changing, companies are just not that focused on Linux when they're developing software or developing hardware. So it's up to the diehard Linux people to create utilities that bridge the gap, and in many cases, they do it for free. But here's the thing. You can be as pissed off as you liked about closed source applications and closed source operating systems, but I'm sorry to tell you this, but the argument that just because Linux is mainly open source doesn't by default make it better. Something new comes out, it says it works for Windows, it says it works for Mac, and it says nothing about Linux. So you spend the next couple of hours researching to see if it will work. And again, I'm not hating on Linux itself, I'm hating on the experience from a Windows user point of view trying to move to Linux. I'm hating on the fact that some people think that you need to put down us Windows people and bash our choices in order to show how great they are. I'm hating on the fact that people can't recognize that not everyone in the world is in the same boat. Not everybody has 10 hours a day to learn a new OS. Some of us have stuff to do. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the comments below are gonna be filled with Linux people who by now are frothing at the mouth, picking apart bits of these videos, and thereby simply proving my point. I'm also not leaving Linux, but as of right now, as a desktop is just more of a hassle than it's worth. 
And if you're not technical, the moment you step outside of the pretty GUI interface, be prepared for a world of downtime, loads of frustration from that incredibly unhelpful community. And this is where YouTube is your friend loads and loads of amazing creators on here on this platform. So now if you're thinking about installing Windows 11, here's how you can do that without removing Windows 10. And over here, you can check out a video that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe if this is your first time here. And I'll see you in this video or this video, or I'll see you in both. Can't wait to see the comments.